Um, thanks for having me here tonight. I'm Mark Metcalf. I'm running for Kentucky State Treasurer. This race is about leadership. It's about stewardship. It's about who will speak for the taxpayers of Kentucky for the next four years. As your state treasurer, I will do these things. I will make sure the bills are paid, but only the right bills. Any bills that shouldn't be paid or appear unconstitutional or illegal, in other words, there's not a line in the budget for those expenditures, I will throw the red flag and not pay them and wait for guidance from the Attorney General. I uh, also will make certain that we break away from the woke corporations who want to impose on us what's called ESG, environmental, social, and governmental. Thank you. Now, the Kentucky State Treasurer is supposed to report what business is doing, uh, having activities in Kentucky, including those that want to manage uh, the pensions of Kentucky, uh, that they be reported to the General Assembly and that we divest ourselves from them, not them from us. I wholly support that. Um, and right now they're twisting around trying to say, you know, uh, we, we are not doing the fossil fuels what you say we're doing. And in that case, <laughs> my position is then we don't have a problem. But why are you suppressing coal? Why are you suppressing oil? Why are you suppressing natural gas? They are the cheapest, most efficient means of heating the U.S. and cooling the U.S. and moving vehicles from New York to Los Angeles that God ever invented. So, I'm going to push back and push back hard against these businesses or these investment, corporate investment companies um, we know them as BlackRock, we know them as Citicorp, uh, we know them as Lehman Brothers and Solomon Brothers. I don't care what the name is, we're not going to do business with them. We will break loose from them. And thank you. <laughs> Let me also point out this. In Harlan County tonight, there are si at least six large mines going full tilt. Miners are making up to $50 an hour, and if you're willing to go into a deep shaft mine, you can make $150,000 a year. Now, the best welfare program ever invented is a job, and these folks don't look for any help taking care of themselves except the hand at the end of their own sleeve. Why aren't we supporting them? Well, we are. We call, the Democrats call them environmental terrorists. They call them polluters. What do we Republicans call them? We call them the backbone of America. That's what we call them. And that's what we call the trucker. That's what we call the people who carry hide and lay brick. The same people who plumb our homes and wire our homes. That's who the Republican Party is about. We're the party of responsibility. We don't spend more than we have. And we don't in, in debt our children and our grandchildren's backs with the debts of the present. It's immoral to do that, and yet we've been doing it across this country for years. And let me point out to you that a young person entering the workforce in Kentucky has on their back $20,000 in debt. And that's not from the budget office in Kentucky, that's from the truth and accounting uh, dot com. They are a nonpartisan or bipartisan outfit that says this is the debt that each worker in Kentucky is, is, is carrying right now. And it doesn't matter how much they make each year, when you divide the debt by the number of, of workers who are taxpayers, you come up with $20,000 of debt on the shoulders of young people who never created those debts. They were created maybe a generation ago. Now, what, what do you want to know about me? Well, here I'll tell you just a little bit. I'm a six-term county attorney from Garrett County, Kentucky. That's Lancaster. Lexington, Nicholasville, Lancaster, Fayette, Jesmond, Garrett. I served the Justice Department under President Bush. I handled four areas for, uh, for uh, the Justice Department. I handled election reform. Some of you will remember that little election we had in 2000 with the hanging chads and so forth. I was the special counsel for election reform. I went on from there to domestic security, think now border security. I was a prosecutor there. I then went to Guantanamo Bay and I handled a terrorism case. The name of the terrorist, Moaz Abed. You can look him up online. We gave him back to the Brits and said, you all can have him. We don't want him anymore. 
Next, I was appointed to the United States Immigration Court in Miami, Florida. I know the, the terrible costs and the risks associated with immigration fraud and unsecured borders. And you can count on me to be tough on those issues. For one thing, finding out how much does it cost us to support illegal immigration in Kentucky. We don't know. I work with the Center for Immigration Studies in, in Washington. I'm one of their writers. So, just remember this tonight. If you want to find out what the problems with the immigration courts are, go to Built to Fail, Disorder and Deception in America's Immigration Courts. I wrote that. It was published in 2011, right before I went downrange to Iraq. I'm a combat veteran of Iraq. You all don't know this. I don't think you would, and I'm glad you don't in some respects, because if you knew something about that mission, it meant that we had people killed. We took 3,000 over. We brought 3,000 home. We closed the 149th Brigade from Kentucky, closed American operations, combat operations in Iraq in 2011. And some of your sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters were on that mission. Now, a couple of things to, to point out to you about some things that have happened, good things. I got the five minute, instead of the two minute warning, I got the five minute warning. Uh, I was Kentucky's outstanding county attorney in 2000. 13, my child support office was number one in the state in 2017 for counties its size. And I've argued for Kentucky twice before the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, that's just a little bit about me, a little bit about the positions I'm taking on issues of concern to Kentuckians. But I am a small government Republican. And what you will get from me are big policies to achieve small government in Kentucky. And I will. And I'm just so we get this right the first time, everybody in Garrett County's got my cell phone number. If they wanted, I had calls on the way up here on, on issues affecting the county. So here's my here's my cell phone number. It is 703-863-3748. That's the number that I got when I went to the Justice Department. My phone was not responding well to an urban network, so I got a new phone. They, had, they would let me keep my old phone for my old number. Got uh, got a new number. But that's how most people reach me, and changing it would mean losing a bunch of contact. So if you want to reach me, that's the way to do it. I'm not changing the number. Now, uh, I've gone over about one minute on the telling you a little bit about me. Do any of you have any questions for me? Yes, sir. Do you oppose leadership for the world six I support putting them back where they want to be. That's what I support. I am, I am endorsed by Kentucky Right to Life, and I am, and I am endorsed by, by Northern Kentucky Right to Life. And I got their 100% pro-life affirmative endorsement. Uh, Andrew Cooper Ryder, you know, I don't mind mentioning the people that I'm running against. Some people say don't mention them. He got what they call the endorsement. I got the affirmative endorsement, which is, means I'm 100% pro-life in the opinion of those who, who make those decisions. And, and I got uh, the Kentucky right to life endorsement. I'm the only candidate who got both. Um, and there's, sorry, there are two others. I'm the only candidate who got both. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. As treasurer, would you be able to influence the school choice question? Well, you know, if I can, I will. Let me just put it that way. I don't. I know that the, the treasurer has limited authority. It's limited what the uh, what the legislature says we do. You know, we're constitutional officers. But when I talk on these issues, if there is a legal and constitutional way to do it, in other words, a rule of law way to do it, I will do it. That's the best I can offer you. But I believe in school choice and. School choice creates competition, among other things. If the public schools want to have our sons and daughters being educated, or grandsons and granddaughters, they better be better than the, than the, the other option, which would be privately educated or in parochial schools, all of which I support, by the way. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, I guess yes, sir. There was a reference made earlier to possibly shaking up the cabinet for health and family services. I would imagine as a county attorney that you had an opportunity to work with them at some All the time. Point. So I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, it's new to me, that concept. What's your take on that? What are the benefits of the campus way of structure now? What are ways that possibly we're going to entertain making some changes? What kind of change might you see? And how does that impact us financially? 
Well, financially, I don't know that it would have an effect because I expect they're going to be funded at the same levels they're being funded at. Um, they, they, have pro they have big problems. One is they can't retain personnel. They, they, the personnel who leave say, you can't pay me enough to do this job. And I know what they do. They are, in many respects, our prosecution witnesses. Um, so when children are, are subject to dependency, neglect, and abuse, they're the officers, really, like the police officers who investigate. Uh, they do awfully good work, uh, but it's an uneven product. You know, in Garrett County, you get a good product, but someplace else, maybe not so good. It really depends on the personnel. Uh, taking children away from parents is judicially reviewed, and it's reviewed once at the beginning in a preliminary form, and then it's it's also reviewed again with a full hearing. So it's this is not done um, randomly. But let me point out to you, they do good work, and when they do good work, we save children's lives. I had a case in which children had literally been starved, and the cabinet intervened. We saved those children and had them placed with adoptive parents. They did their work. Uh, and they did their work because another county didn't do their work. Uh, they, these kids were being starved, and I'm not going to mention the county, but it was north of Garrett, above, above Fayette. We intervened. We saved these children from being starved. The boys were being fed better than the girls. Oddly enough, we couldn't figure it out. But that's what was happening. And in, in this northern county, the little boys were so hungry, they knotted the sheets in their room together. Uh, they, wouldn't be, they weren't let out at night to go to the bathroom, had a bucket. They let, they let themselves down from the bedroom window, went to the nearest convenience store that, you know, gas and, you know, that kind of thing was sold, convenience store, and started taking <laughs> food off the shelves, locked themselves in the men's room, and started eating. When we intervened, within a year of those boys being, re being placed with new parents, guardians, foster parents, each of the children had gained, four, each of those boys had gained four inches and 25 pounds. So it, it, abuse happens, children sometimes die. We haven't had any children die on my watch, and I wouldn't blame the cabinet if it happened, because you can't control criminals, and they have names like moms and dads who neglect their children to the point of death, and or abuse them to the point of death. Uh, so the cabinet does very good work in my opinion, but do we need to look at a reorganization? Sure, but the whole idea is to improve performance. So we need to set up performance metrics, and we need to be able to say, this is this is done well. This can be done better. Anybody else? I, I mean, time has been called on me. Thank you so much for being here. I want to remind you of this. Each one of you in here can call 10 people. And you've got about 100 people here tonight. Each of you can call 10 people. That's 10,000. That's 10,000 people that you can influence. Now let me tell you, it doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen by accident. That we win these elections and have now become the dominant party in Kentucky. It happened because of the people sitting in this room who said, enough is enough from the Democrats. Yes. So what I want to ask you to do is this. Whether you support me or don't, or Ryan Quarles or you don't, make sure that you get your friends, your family, and your employees to the polls. Because that's the way we not only remain dominant, but, we re but our policies remain dominant. If we, if we remain done. Thank you for listening to me tonight. I'm not leaving before everyone has cleared the building because this is my fifth visit to Northern Kentucky. I can't shake enough hands. So I want to see every one of you before you leave tonight. Thank you all.